Hi guys, it's Miss Hendricks, and I'm back with another one of my winter holiday stories. This time I'm reading you guys a story that was picked by one of my second graders. It's called Too Many Tamales by Gary Soto and illustrated by Ed Martinez. Tamales, as some of you guys know, are one of my favorite foods. So I hope you enjoy this story, which I do, because it's about one of my favorite foods. So, Too Many Tamales by Gary Soto and illustrated by Ed Martinez. Snow drifted through the streets and now that it was dusk, Christmas trees glittered in the windows. Maria moved her nose off the glass and came back to the counter. She was acting very grown up now, helping her mother make tamales. Their hands were sticky with masa, the dough and tamales. That's very good, her mother said. Maria happily kneaded the masa. She felt grown up wearing her mother's apron. Her mother had even let her wear lipstick and perfume. If only I could wear mom's ring, she thought to herself. Maria's mother had placed her diamond ring on the kitchen counter. Maria loved that ring. She loved how it sparkled like a Christmas tree lights. Her mother left the kitchen to answer the telephone and Maria couldn't help herself. She wiped her hands on the apron and looked back at the door. I'll just wear the ring for a minute, she said. The ring sparkled on her thumb. Maria returned to reading, kneading the masa, her hands pumping up and down and on her thumb, the ring disappeared, then reappeared in the sticky glob of dough. Her mother returned and took the, mull, the bowl from her. Go get your father for this part. Then the three of them began to spread the masa on corn husks. Maria's father helped by plopping a spoonful of meat in the center and folding the husk. He then placed them in a large pot on the stove. They made 24 tamales as the windows grew white with pearls of a delicious smelling steam. A few hours later, the family came over with arms full, armfuls of pre presents. Her grandparents, her aunt and uncle, and her cousins, Dolores, Teresa, and Danny. Maria kissed everyone hello. Then she grabbed Dolores by the arm and took her upstairs to play, with the other cousins tagging along behind them. They cut out pictures from the newspaper, pictures of toys they were hoping were wrapped and sitting underneath the Christmas tree. As Maria was snipping out a picture of a pearl necklace, a shock spread through her body. The ring! She screamed. Everyone stared at her. What ring? Dolores asked. Without answering, Maria ran to the kitchen. The steaming tamales lay piled on the platter. The ring is inside one of the tamales, she thought to herself. It must have come off when I was kneading the masa. Dolores, Teresa, and Danny skidded into the kitchen behind her. Help me! Maria cried. They looked at each other. Danny piped up first. What do you want us to do? Eat them, she said. If you bite something hard, tell me. The four of them started eating. They ripped off the husks and bit into them. The first one was good. The second one was pretty good. But by the third one, Tamale, they were tired of the taste. Keep eating, Maria scolded. Corn husks littered the floor. Their stomachs were stretched until they hurt. But the cousins kept eating until only one tamale was left on the plate. This must be it, she said. The ring must be in that one. We'll each take a bite. You first, Danny. Danny was the youngest, so he didn't argue. He took a bite. Nothing. Dolores took a bite. Nothing. Maria, Teresa took a big bite. Still nothing. It was Maria's turn. She took a deep breath and slowly, gently bit into the last mouthful of tamale. Nothing. Didn't any of you bite into something hard, Maria asked. Danny frowned. I think I swallowed something hard, he said. Swallowed it, Maria cried eyes big with worry. She looked inside his mouth. Teresa said, I didn't bite into anything hard, but I think I'm sick. 
She held her stomach with both hands. Maria didn't dare look into Teresa's mouth. She wanted to throw herself on the floor and cry. The ring was now in her cousin's throat, or worse, his belly. How in the world could she tell her mother? But I have to, she thought. She could feel tears pressing to get out as she walked into the living room where the grown-ups sat talking. They chattered so loudly, Maria didn't know how to interrupt. Then she tugged on her mother's sleeve. What's the matter, her mother sobbed. She asked. She took Maria's hand. I did something wrong, Maria sobbed. What, her mother asked. Maria thought about the beautiful ring that was now sitting inside Danny's belly and got ready to confess. And then she gasped. The ring was on her mother's finger, as bright as ever. The ring, Maria nearly screamed. Maria's mother scraped off a flake of dried masa. You were playing with it, she said, smiling gently. I wanted to wear it, Maria said, looking down at the ring. Then she told them about how they'd eaten all the tamales. Maria's mother moved the ring a little on her finger. It winked a silvery light. Maria looked up and Aunt Rosa winked at her too. Well, it looks like we'll have to cook up another batch of tamales, Rosa said. Maria held her full stomach as everyone filed into the kitchen joking and laughing. At first, she still felt like crying as she kneaded a great bowl of masa next to Aunt Rosa. As she pumped her hands up and down and leftover tear fell from her eyelashes into the bowl and for just a second rested on her fingers, sparkling like a jewel. Then Rosa nudged her with her elbow and said, Hey, Nina, it's not so bad. Everyone knows the second batch of tamales is better than the first, right? When Dolores, Teresa, and Danny heard that from the other side of the room, they let out a groan the size of 24 tamales. Then Maria couldn't help herself. She laughed, and pretty soon everyone else was laughing, including her mother. And when Maria put her hands back into the bowl of masa, the leftover tear was gone. So I hope you enjoyed that story and I hope you were able to spend some time with your family this holiday season and enjoy some family traditions. Have a wonderful time. Stay happy and safe. I'll have two more stories for you next week, including one on Tuesday about Hanukkah, which starts tonight, and dinosaurs. And I can't wait to share those with you. So have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later.